This piece of furniture was made about 1720, mm -hmm. and I think it was made by a, a cabinet maker who was already well established mm -hmm. because he was using materials which were fashionable 20 years earlier. Ah, yes. And it is a very interesting piece. First of all, if we look at it, it does have the appearance of a 1730s piece of furniture. Rather square. Yes. Uh, it's lost the rather wider appearance at the top, even the retaining moulding, but it still mm -hmm. has these dummy drawers at the top, which yeah. indicate there should be a sliding well inside. Yeah. This was the fashion up to about 1725, mm -hmm. 1730. There it is, the well, which of course was accessible only when you opened the, yeah. open the top. Secret papers and so forth inside. But in here you have laburnum veneer. Now, laburnum. I'm sure I must have seen, I don't remember seeing, laburnum cut in this way mm. on a piece of a furniture of this type before. Yes. Now, you know, you can see that it's cut in fairly narrow strips. Yes, yes. Laburnum is not a huge tree. They don't no. use, the, they use the branches. And normally you'd expect to see it cut either straight across mm -hmm. the branch to give a round yeah. or like French bread at a 45 yeah. degrees yes. to give the ovals or what we call yes. oyster. oyster yeah. Now oyster veneer was fashionable 1690s through to 1710 mm -hmm. and by 1720 had gone out. This man loved laburnum yeah. and he's quartered it giving this fantastic dramatic effect yes. and when you opened it when it was new it must have looked wonderful. Yeah. I mean, these were bright colors, bright yellow yes. and dark contrast. Mm. And the way it's, it's laid all the way around in this yeah. uh, diametric pattern, it's wonderful quality. I mean, you, these are all original, the little handles. And when you open the drawer, little ink wells, and look at that, walnut liners. You see, I mean, absolutely extraordinary. Mm. By this time, the average up-to-date craftsman would have been using fine quality oak mm. rather than walnut. Love to see it. The mark of a craftsman there. Now, regretfully, I'm going to close that because it's quite a majestic interior. I love it. And we're going to look at the front, basically. Now, the handles, for example, can you put your loper back in? Fine. The handles are later. Yes, I can see. 1880, 1890, yeah, I think, screwed things. on. Dreadful things. Um, which is a shame, but it's cosmetic. I like to see the shadow here yes. of a, of a good escutcheon, yes. but I, I feel that originally, the man who made this with this wonderful cross banding and divided draw front wouldn't actually put anything no, very big no, there. Probably a, quite a small escutcheon yes. um, in keeping with much smaller handles of the side. Yes. Uh, there's so much to say, it's difficult. I, all the things are right about it. The veneer laid on, again, in little sections, mm -hmm. all the burnum, and this, of course, is a burr, burr you. Yes, burr you, yes. Yeah. It's that magic color that, that only this period can create. Yes. And when we look at the ends, another mark of quality, a paneled end. This is made of four sections. Oh, yes. Now, a cheaper one, they would have used either just plain uh, timber, or they would have left off the veneer and painted, mm -hmm. but, but this man went to town everywhere. There yeah. is not a detail, not a piece left that he didn't put detail to. Look here, what we call a caddy molding here, just a smaller version yeah. of the big molding, yes. again laid on in little sections, little caddy molding, and then he even put some stringing around it. You must be very proud of it. I am. I don't see it very often because it's underneath piles of paper. <laughs> oh, good. Exactly as it should be. Well used. Yes. Well used. Yes. Lovely. I think it's absolutely marvellous. Now, yes. there's a secret drawer. We've got to have a look at that because this is a very unusual feature. You see that pop out? Yeah. Now, there's the oak lining, you see, which you would have expected yes. to see in the yes. top. Yeah. Nice thin drawers, nice thin drawer linings. And that's kept in place by this little spring. Yeah. It's a bit tough, and you can see where people have actually probably tried to force it up yeah. with a screwdriver or something to make these little dents. Mm -hmm. Left. Ah. The man that wrote that was working in 1720. I mean, it's magic. Oh, I've never seen Absolutely that. Never wonderful. Seen that before. Just to make sure you put it in the right yeah. place. Altogether, a quite exceptional piece of furniture which is still usable today. It looks beautiful today. Yeah. It's been through, what well, we call it, it's been through the mill. It's had some restoration. Yes. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It's part of its history. Yeah. And 
leave well alone. Leave it, enjoy it, and use yes. it. Oh, it feels good. Good. Now, we've got to get on to the commercial aspect uh, of insurance. What you've got to consider is the sort of valuation you'd get if you went to a good dealer or an important auction, for it's a, very, it's a specialized piece. And to replace it, you'd have to think somewhere in the region of 15 to 18,000 pounds. Uh, yes. It is a very yes. valuable, very interesting, very lovely piece of furniture. I, I like that. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>